Look at that. Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flitter Mouse bringing you the most exotic shotgun ammunition from around the world. Today we have the Russian Poliva Magnum Slug, designed by Viktor Polov himself. One of those last designs, in fact, before he died earlier this year. Now this is a rather complex design. It uses five different components, the gas seal, the tail assembly, and then the lead slug, and then you have two sabos. The slug is subcaliber or smaller than the inside diameter of the barrel, so the purpose of the sabos is just to fill that extra space so that the slug is centered and flies straight down the barrel. All right, we're gonna try these out here today. They're a Russian fin stabilized lead slug. S sabo. Sabo. <laughs> yeah, it is a sabo, hollow point. 35 grams? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. 35 grains of long shot. 35 grains of long shot. Yeah. All right. We're going to shoot them through a smooth bore with a modified choke? Yeah. Okay. A slap shot. First, first target is the magazine, the very wet, thick magazine. We'll see if we can get some penetration with that. A wellness magazine. Yeah. Never fired through this barrel before. Yeah. Blind in one eye and deaf in the other. We'll see if we can and, hit something. And of course, with, we only had six of these, so we don't have any practice shots. We'll start with a large target at about 10 yards. Figure out where it's hitting and adjust for further ranges and smaller targets. Holy cow. I, that was the recoil. Ouch. Yeah, these, I, I warned them, these are a heavy magnum load, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. All right, here it comes. The sabos and the gas seal have separated, and the slug is flying straight and true. That big old 60 caliber slug slamming into that pile of wet magazines. All right, let's see what kind of damage the slug did to the magazines and what the magazines did to the slug. I think magazines represent flush pretty well. Yeah. Look at that hole. If we can get a little sunlight down in that hole. Nope, wrong way. It's very deep though. Two fingers, maybe three. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> Where's Greg when you need him? That's a shocker there. That's let's, about a like Greg sized thumb. Let's see what we got here. Did it go through? It did not go through. Not okay, go good, through, good. Look at that mass. Yeah, I just bulged out that sucker. Okay, there's about one third. And I think we got some pieces. Wow, it just blew up that slug. Yeah, there's there a piece go. of lead there's... fragment. Look at that. Just exploded that thing inside. That's a that's a good slug, man. Yeah. Those Russians don't mess around. Here we go, it's another chunk. Wow. So the hollow point definitely works. I wonder where all the fins and crap are. They're probably There's way down piece. and stuff. More lead. There's a lot of lead in that sucker. It doesn't look like it's heavy, but it's it's a heavy slug. It's, oh, five grams, six grams heavier than a, than a foster slug. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're shooting that, you don't want to be precariously balanced because it's going to knock you on your butt. Yeah, it's a, it's a, there's, there's the wadding. Wad. That's supposed to separate. That's interesting. Yeah, that's just the base of the wad. That's, that's supposed to separate from the, from the fins. From the fins? Yeah. They might have just carried through there. Yeah, look at that hole. <laughs> that's why I like magazines so much. They're, you know, the ballistic gel is one thing, but when you have that fiber, wet, fibery stuff, that's tough to penetrate. Okay, we got a big blob of ballistic gel. Let's see if we can make a dance. Yeah. Oh, we don't have it strapped down. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. are you, I don't know if your shoulder's ready or not. There we go. That was a hotter load. Again, we have excellent stability and accuracy. 
and look at that energy transfer. The slug has fragmented. You can see pieces of lead flying outwards in various directions. I think these would be excellent uh, hunting rounds for wild boar or other big game. All right, that, uh, those seem to be pretty accurate. That was my point of aim. It's probably mm -hmm. plastic or something in there. Things are nasty, man. Oy. I wish they'd start importing stuff, stuff like this in the U.S. That's just shredding it down there. Yeah. Look at this exit, though. It came apart. And yeah. Slice and dice. It's a beautiful gel there. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see what it'll do to the lead. Man, it threw that thing like it was made out of styrofoam. The lead plate is just another medium we use to compare damage from different types of slugs. I think it's easy to say that this slug it ranks up there on the probably the top two or three of the most powerful slugs we've ever tested so far these slugs are only available in russia i wish we could get them here gosh uh and alexi said that they only come unloaded so you have to load them in your shells yourself there uh, you talk about lead on lead violence look at that <laughs> that's easily inch deep 25 millimeters or whatever you guys call it. <laughs> that, yeah, third of a finger. Yeah. Just the tip. Just the tip, baby. Look at that. That's a thick plate, too. Cracked it. That's a thicker than, the uh, other one was only 20 pounds, and I think it would have gone through the 20 pound one. That's a lot of energy. Looks like a slug in the bottom. Yeah, I just me welded it to it. Great, great, and accurate too. Impressive. Okay, we're at uh, about 20 yards, maybe a little less. And uh, we'll try to chronograph this one. We almost forgot to do that. I bet so. they're hitting 14. 1385, you're very close. One thing we learned in retrospect, of course, is these slugs have a pretty flat trajectory for being a very heavy slug and this is due to them just having a smaller profile than a 12 gauge foster slug which is around 70 calibers with the improved aerodynamics they decelerate less and therefore you have less drop by the time it reaches the target we're going against a big metal little trash can full of water basically i'm ready when you are Look at that. Ooh. That water shot 30 feet in the air. And the poor table takes another beating. <laughs> now, if you aren't convinced that these slugs are some of the most powerful we ever shot, check this out. Absolutely tore that thing open. There was no seams on that thing, and it's made out of steel. And the amazing thing, this wasn't even a sealed container, and it still had enough energy to blow the bottom off and rip the entire uh, front face of it open like a can opener. Now we set the trash can on an AR500 plate to try to distribute the energy so he wouldn't damage the table, but that didn't even prevent that from happening. Wow. See, that's what I thought the cylinder did with the, the sealed cylinder. That's what we were hoping for. Yeah. Well, definitely got some reaction out of that one. Blew the bottom off. See for sure on the slow mo, but looks like right here. Yeah, you were close to being on target. They look like, and they're it looks like they're pretty accurate so far. But that's that hydro hydraulic power, you know, even with, even with the open top. And that's steel, that's not aluminum. Yeah, yeah, don't cut yourself. Yeah. Find that, ourselves cutting ourselves on this stuff. 
Not too bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're figuring out where the where the ballistics are on these things. So, look at the back where the fragments went through. Yeah, just tore it a new one, several new ones. <laughs> Not bad. Good shooting. Recoils a bear, right? Oh man, you knock a bear on his butt. Okay, the 50 yard long shot with feed sights, not no scope. No scope, no guarantees. And no second chances because this is our last one. Let's see if Daddy could do it. I don't know. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. What about 300 yards? Oh! Well, it's not as bad as it looks. The slug just barely cleared the top of that thing. And really, that's not a bad shot at all, considering he's using just the front bead sight to aim with, and that front bead is actually covering the target completely. Let's see if we can hit with a American Foster Slug. A, what is that, a Federal True Ball? See if, uh... okay. I think the Russian ones are, are accurate. Just, we just got to sight them in, you know? Okay, I'm ready. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know I pulled that one. Yeah. I felt my seat 1397. Move. I felt my seat move just as I pulled. Jeez. Okay, take another one. That one went high, so right. aim a little bit lower. Even if you get a skip shot, that'd be cool. You got it. Took his hat off. Yeah. yards, bead sights, 102 degrees outside. Uh, <laughs> right there. Look at the back side of that hat though. That would have been his brains coming out. Yep. I think if we had a few more shots with the Russian Polyva Magnums, you would have eventually got on target at that range. We, we can't, we don't have enough to take practice shots with, so do the best we can and Show the, the ballistics of it. Shooting some Angus. Thank you, Alexei. Alexei Lavrov from Leningrad. Did you know that YouTube makes its money from advertising and then gives us a cut of that money so that we can get some earnings from that? And am I the only person who thinks it's an insane business practice to allow a, a company to run ads for ad blockers to basically cut off all revenue from your platform is is that crazy talk oh my gosh yeah YouTube not only hates us they hate themselves apparently but uh, I want to take this minute to thank all our latest patreon supporters who understand this insanity that's going on not it's not just adpocalypse it's the promotion of of these ad blockers too I mean it's like Netflix advertising uh, like a BitTorrent program, so you could download movies and TV shows for free. It's it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Without our Patreon supporters, we'd have to quit like so many other channels have already done. A lot of great channels have just fallen by the wayside because of all this nonsense. Thanks for watching.